Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Muji workshop. My name is Cindy, and I'll be your moderator today. We are joined by Holly from Breathing Room Organization, just in time for spring when everyone's doing some spring cleaning, some organization. And today we're gonna take you through some really great tips on how to declutter that closet because I know that everyone probably has that one catch all closet. If you happen to want to share today's workshop with a friend or want to rewatch it, we will have the full workshop recap available on YouTube afterwards shortly. And we will also have a mini Q&A session at the end of this workshop. So if you have a question for us or for Holly, please be sure to leave it for us using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And with that, I'd love to turn it over to today's host, Holly. Thank you so much, Cindy. And hello, everybody. I see people continuing to come in. So so nice to have people from everywhere. I'd love to see where people are from. If you guys want to tell me where you're logging in from. So it might be one o'clock like it is here on the West Coast or four o'clock on the East Coast. I hope you're in comfy clothes wherever you are um, because it's Friday. <laughs> I'm in comfy clothes. Also, I'm sitting on the ground. So jeans weren't going to work for this. Um, but I'm so thrilled to be here. I thank you to Muji. Thank you to Cindy. I have been a big fan of Muji for a while. I just love the functionality and aesthetics of their products. So this is very fun. And I know spring cleaning is something on all of our minds right now. Um, I'm getting asked a lot of questions about it. And it's so funny from this year to this time last year when we were all stuck inside and our homes were kind of all we had for a little bit. Um, now we're starting to venture back out, which is amazing, but we still need that spring refresh and maybe even more so now. Oh, yay. Hi, Jen, SF Bay area. Awesome. Um, so I'm so glad you guys are all here. San Francisco, London. Oh my gosh. Houston, New York. Awesome. Hi everybody. Okay. So I think first and foremost, um, the reason we all want to spring clean is for that like breath of fresh air. Um, but we kind of get stopped in our tracks, Austria. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Um, we all get stopped in our tracks when we get overwhelmed and that completely defeats the purpose. And so my hope is from this 30 minute session that you won't feel overwhelmed, that you can even take off a bite-sized piece and create that space that you really want that we're all searching for. So I'm going to start out by just giving you the basics. And it is not rocket science. I think a lot of us want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. It can be really simple. Um, so I'll walk you through the basics of how to organize, whether it's a small space or a big space. I know that right now we're kind of talking about how to organize small spaces, limited space. And that has been really important to me. We have a pretty small house. Uh, no, I was about to say five kids. I do not have five kids. There's five people in our family. <laughs> I only have three kids. Um, but I've had to be really creative with how I use the space because our house isn't getting bigger, but my kids are getting bigger. And um, I swear kids kind of just have this magical ability to multiply their objects. Um, so I've had to be really creative in how we use our smaller space. Um, so a little bit later, I will walk you through creative ways to do that. Um, but first and foremost, how to organize any space. So the first thing is to take it all out. Whether it's a closet or your fridge or a pantry, you have to take everything out first because the most important thing in creating a functional system that's going to last is knowing exactly what you have now and then knowing what you're going to put back in there. And what you have right now is hopefully not what you're going to put back in there. Hopefully in the process of decluttering, you'll be able to edit and refine what's going to go back in there. And I love when I'm organizing for clients and we do the process of taking everything out, um, how people are truly amazed by what they find, you know, whether that's in a fridge, it's like, um, Vegemite packs from like seven years ago, or like, you know, five bottles of ketchup or in your closet, people are, you know, find things that they had no idea what they had. But say for a closet, it's super important to take everything out because in creating the system, you'll want to know what categories 
you're going to be putting back in. And those categories create the list of your product, like product list of any organizing products you need. So take it all out. In the process of taking it all out, you begin to categorize and sort um, like with like. So all the categories kind of go into similar piles. In this process of sorting, that's when you edit. You're like, okay, I have seven pairs of black yoga pants. And even though like in the last year, seven pairs of black yoga pants might have been completely appropriate for COVID. Um, now that we're venturing out, you might be like, you know what, seven, I don't need seven. I rather create space. And I think that's a really important question that I always ask my clients and even myself is would I rather have, and I'm just using seven pairs of black yoga pants as an example, but would I ha- rather have seven pairs of those pants or space? And for me, I rather have space because it's a really good feeling. I love coming into my house more when I have that space, especially, you know, with everything going on in our lives, your home should be a sanctuary where you come home and you feel that physical space and then mental space. So I walked you through, you take it all out, you sort it and you edit it. Um, A small point there, editing means purging. I just think editing (laughs) is a nicer way to say it, but I really appreciate that Muji has a lot of sustainable, um, their mission is about sustainability and being eco-friendly. And so to be responsible with what you do with what you edit, kind of have a plan. So are you going to donate it? Is there a specific friend you're going to donate it to? Are you going to donate to the Goodwill? Are you going to recycle items? So I think um, just kind of having a plan of how you're going to responsibly edit your items is really important. And so then you have everything out, it's sorted, it's edited. Next, you're going to clean. And so yes, spring cleaning, you have to clean. You don't wanna put all your items back into an area that has um, dirty surfaces, whether it's dusty or like if you're, if you're gonna do an amazing organizing job in your fridge and there's you know like sticky messes, you just wanna really clean the surfaces because um, whether or not you're going to be putting new products back in, you want a nice clean blank slate. So clean. And then you organize. And this is where we're going to get into the next little section of how to organize and how to create your system. So we talked about you kind of take an inventory of all your categories. And so you have that and you can even write it down in a list and you kind of bullet out what categories you have that can really help you understand what products you might need. So behind me, um, these are my categories. This is kind of the catch-all closet. You know, we have full sheets, towels, twin sheets, guest, bathroom, crib, swim, baby, baby. We have a lot of baby stuff. (laughs) Um, But then up here, you know, it's like hair tools, sunscreen, hair products, oral travel sun. So those were all the categories I had around. And that kind of helped me create my list of what I needed to buy. Um, or if you already have those systems in place, it just kind of helps you visually start to think about how you want to lay it out. Um, and so if you're going for like a total spring refresh, a new system, and you want those new products, take a tape measure, measure the length of your closet, the height, and then go online and see the specifics about the measurements of each product. What I sometimes have uh, clients do is you can even just, you know, like cut out pieces of paper to really understand how it's going to fit in your closet. So you cut out a piece of paper this size and you can lay it out and really map out if you want to be really specific how it's going to work. I will say the really nice thing about all these Muji projects is products is that you don't have to get it perfect because they come in such different sizes. You can kind of have fun with making it work for your space, even if you haven't completely measured it out. For example, these ones come in two different sizes and I kind of picked a variety of products and I just was able to easily make them fit. So I didn't actually measure anything. I just, I winged it. Um, But if you have a very small space and you want to completely maximize the area, then definitely measure. Um, And then as far as your small space, surface area is key. And so there's several things you can do there. You can easily go to your local Home Depot or something and add an extra shelf. Um, 
if you're like, no way, that does not sound fun. The good thing is all these products stack and that creates surface area and that maximizes your space, which I totally love. So if you're lacking on any shelves, this could even be from the ground up. You don't even necessarily need shelves. You can stack all these items. Then when we talk about stacking, you kind of want to be specific about placement. The things that you go for the most should be on top of items so you're not pulling them out. Then as far as creating your system, it really depends on who's in your household. So um, the answer might be simple. You're like, hey, it's only my closet. I can do it however I want. Otherwise, if you have little ones in your family or you just like want to make it really easy on somebody in your household that you know is always going to be asking you where things are and you're like, okay, I'm going to put that at eye level. You want to be really thoughtful about how you plan for placement. And so say if this was like a craft closet or there's art supplies or there's just stuff that you don't want your kids necessarily getting to, those would go higher. But also as far as placement, things that you're going to want to grab for uh, more often, they go on top. And so placement's really important when you're planning them out. So as far as organizing goes, you have functionality, which means really being specific about how you want to plan it out, the categories, um, accessibility, how easy it is to access, because any system is going to be better if it lasts for you and it makes sense for your lifestyle and your family. And then the other part of organizing, and I think that's why a lot of us and even if you signed up for this right now, you probably love aesthetics. And so first functionality, then aesthetics, and they can absolutely marry. That's one of my favorite parts of my job. The wonderful thing about the products behind me is that they're not see-through. And this is like kind of a philosophy I use in a garage. I personally don't want to see what's in bins, especially in a garage, because a garage is a big scale example of this, but there is so much going on in a garage. So with clients, when I do garage projects, I always use big white tubs that you can't see through because then you walk in and they're labeled, you know, what's in there, but you don't have to have that kind of visual chaos. And going back to the beginning, a lot of us want to spring clean or organize because we want to reduce that feeling of chaos. And so, you know, especially in a house or an apartment or a condo where you have limited space and you need to pack a lot into a small area. It can sometimes, even though it's a small space, still feel and look really overwhelming and such a good way to use aesthetics to change that is by picking a very cohesive line of products, um, a visual template. And I usually have clients, I tell them to pick like two colors or stay within the same color range or pick a metal or a wood or you know, pick within the same line. And so just visually, it's all very cohesive and it, you know, provides that look that you're going for. Um, what's so nice about the Muji line is it's all so neutral and because it stacks, the stacking makes it look very visually cohesive. And once again, going back to the garage analogy, because you don't have to see what's in it, it is so much better on the eyes. Okay, but to that point, because you can't see what's in it, and tying back to functionality, it's only going to be functional if you can easily recall what's in it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about labels. What's so fun is you can, I mean, I bet there's 20 other ways to do this, but I'm going to show you a couple. I actually have way too many different kinds of labels in my house. My kids think that's bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's the job. So here's one example. This is a magnetic label. This is from Meat Method. They have really cute stuff. So this clips on there and you can write right on there. Um, otherwise, as you can see behind me, I love the bin label clips right like that. I wouldn't necessarily put on this one. You can kind of see up there. I have the ones that stick. You can write on there, peel off the adhesive and stick it right there. Also, if you have a label maker, stick the label right on here. I mean, the sky is the limit. These are also great. Other little clips, stick them right on there. 
And then if you don't even want to put the labels directly on the bins, there are shelf labels also. So you write on this, there's a little piece of paper that can go in it, or you can write directly on this and then you just stick it right on the shelf. I mean, clearly I love labels. Um, another little trick is if you're using these, and you guys have probably seen a lot of these, whether you follow me or the container store, these are kind of my go-to, but I mess up on labels occasionally, or I just want to switch them out. And so that's another thing, whether you have a growing family where things are kind of changing or your closet changes seasonally and you want to switch out a label, it comes with a little label, but I buy blank business cards from Amazon. That's nice. They're kind of sturdier. This one's almost out, but then you can mess up on your labels as much as you want or switch them out as much as you want. So that's a little trick. Or if you have business cards and because you're not handing out business cards much, use those old business cards, turn them around and write on them. So that is a nice little trick. Um, if you're going to write directly on them, which you could, you could use white up board um, pens, white, whiteboard pens. <laughs> um, if you wanna change it, use rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol gets things off immediately. So that is very helpful there. So that is for labels. And once again, because you can't see in them, and that's a good thing, you'll want to label everything so it's really easy for you to recall or so that other people in your house can. And we talked about how to organize that. And if you guys have any other questions about that, we can get to them at the end. I heard <laughs> editing paralyzes me. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but then I also wanted to discuss how to organize within these bins. So, I mean, the sky's the limit, honestly. Um, okay, so this is for the person who's that it paralyzes you, okay? <laughs> so if editing paralyzes you, organizing within bins might paralyze you also, and you're not the only one. I'm just gonna say, if you guys don't wanna keep things like nice and tidy within the bins, you know what, the fact that if you've like made a system, that's enough. <laughs> you've done so good and because you can't see into them, like just give yourself, you know, a ticket off. Um, but as far as organizing within the bins goes, I'll show you four towels. A really nice way to do this is just, and okay, if I say file folding and it makes you cringe, I get it, but take a deep breath. It's not that bad. It's not that hard. I actually, even a few years ago, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I had my first baby and I was like, I, I don't know if I'm gonna, oh, the magnetic labels. They're from Meat Method, and I will link them in my stories later. I'm seeing some questions come up. Um, but about file folding, you're welcome. Um, a few years ago, well, seven years ago, when I had my first kid, I was like, I, I just, file, no, file folding is next level. I'm not going to do it. And then it didn't take me long to realize that it's so nice because you see what's there without having to pull things up. So granted, it doesn't really matter. These are all white towels, but I'm just showing you an example. So it's nice to file fold towels or sheets within these bins. I'll show you crib. And these aren't perfect. Crib sheets. Super easy. Um, you know, in one of these, I just threw goggles right in them. And what's so nice is the goggles can be like wet and I can throw them in. It just doesn't matter because these are awesome. You can see them. Plastic containers. And then I'll show you up here. You guys can see my comfy clothes. Um, so I love these sunscreen. Like it just works. It's awesome. Um, but as far as organizing within them, you can use other little containers. So you can get these at container stores. So if you're organizing smaller items in here, maybe like cotton balls or q-tips or something you can place smaller containers within the containers <laughs> a love for containers i'm trying to remember i had um oh yeah and this one this is like bath toys you can sort in your containers i use these and they fit absolutely perfect and that's like one of my um but this is like all the bath items and these fit. I have two of these in here and they fit perfectly in here. So if you're wanting to separate and let's just pause there using containers within containers, isn't just 
because you're crazy about containers. The whole point is functionality. So if you're wanting to separate items or categories, use containers within containers. So that is a way to organize within your bins. Uh, I also wanted to show you the smaller bins. I love these. And again, we talked about stacking and how stacking really maximizes space. So these would be so amazing, like under a kitchen sink, under a bathroom sink because of all the pipes. And this kind of leads us to our next little um, section. Um, other areas. So we see this is a closet. It's so streamlined. They stack. Everything's cohesive. It's kind of a really like easy way to organize. Um, but if you move into areas such as like under sinks, people hate under sinks because of the pipes and they're just ugly. And, you know, you kind of think, oh, well, I can't make it look the way I want to, but you really can. And items like these are so great because say, this one goes under the pipe and then you can stack some on the sides around the pipes. And that again, maximizes the space so much. Um, these would also be great in an office, even in drawers for makeup. So there's so many ways because all these come in so many different sizes and because they stack that you can organize. You can even put these in the fridge, like vegetables, cheeses. I mean, I'll probably do something later where I can show you all the ways to do that. Um, but there's tons of ways to use these products, not just in a closet. Like you can even see these ones would be great for an office. Um, if your kids are still doing remote learning, all their school papers, craft supplies, again, pens, pencils, erasers, whatever it is. And it, like I said, you can put little bins within the bins <laughs> to separate all the tiny little things, especially if they're kids items. I mean, right now I can't tell you how many little tiny LOL doll shoes I have. And they're, I mean, they're so tiny. So I, you know, I could probably use that these for those. So that really covers it. We talked about how to really make it simple, the easy steps, um, to take it all out, sort, edit, clean, and then create your system. Within the systems, we talked about number one, functionality, number two, aesthetics. Those can completely marry. And then I showed you a little bit how to organize within bins and then how to use these bins in other areas of your home. So right now, I think we're gonna turn it over to some question and answer, if I can answer any specific questions. Okay. okay, let me look through them. Um, okay, systems for playrooms, Amanda. Yeah, so I think in playrooms, a huge thing that I always hear from clients is what to do with the big, big items. Um, thanks, Maria. Um, and so thing is, and I have three kids. I have a seven-year-old and almost four-year-old and an almost two-year-old and they love their big, big items. Um, we can't always make those big items go away. Like I wish there was a Mary Poppins purse where we could just put the big items and suddenly they would kind of go away. One thing I do with big items is get a pretty hamper. I did that just yesterday at um, a playroom project. I got this beautiful woven hamper and all the big items and like stuffed animals went in there. Um, as far as other things in the playroom, these would be great, especially the big items. Um, you could put, you know, like tons of magnet tiles, Paw Patrol, and then stack them. If you have multiple kids and they're sharing a space, my suggestion is to get different color labels. And then they know, I mean, if, if they don't want to share, of course, as parents, we want our kids to share, but you could always do like a green and blue label for different kids. Also, um, for little kids that aren't quite readers yet, I print up picture labels. And so if you're using these items, especially in any sort of kids area, whether it's their closet, bedroom, or a playroom, because you can't see through these, kids will want to dump them all out. And so that like doesn't help you. That kind of defeats the purpose of you getting organized. But if you print out a picture of what's in there, so print out a picture of mountain tiles, print out a picture of Paw Patrol, whatever it is, then the kids can see it. 
They don't have to dump it all out to figure out what's in there. And also the pictures really help because kids love that and they're more likely to help clean up. Um, something that I have learned over the last few years of working with kids and having my own three kids, and this is seems so silly and ridiculous, but it it's true, is take off lids. And that might not work if you're going to stack them all. But as far as the items where you feel like your kids are more, most likely to help uh, contribute to cleanup, keep those lids off because I tell you, they're more likely to help put things away. So that's kind of one tip and trick for playrooms. I hope that was helpful. Um, okay. Wow. You guys have really... Um, to store hats. Okay. So you can always go the route of getting hat boxes. You can create, it depends on how much space you have. Um, this is from Madeline. Um, I've had clients where we create a hat wall. So you kind of display, you said not baseball hats, um, wide brim hats. Um, you can create a wall of pegs to display your hats. Um, I've had that be a really popular option for some clients. Um, you can also get sweater boxes. And there's actually a picture on my feed of a closet with all wide sweater boxes. And we put all the hats in there. So that is an idea. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, a uh, recommendation for storing shoes when you come in from outside and we don't have a mudroom or closet nearby. You live in a tiny apartment. Um, okay, so <laughs> I don't have a closet or mudroom nearby. I also have um, not just my kids, but people in my family that like would not <laughs> even put their stuff away. We have a basket outside um, and that works for us. That is probably not like the amazing professional organizer <laughs> answer you wanted, but we have, and if you're in an apartment, put it inside your apartment, obviously, but we have this I got a really pretty basket and those are like the shoes that they wear every day. So the shoes they wear to school and they take them off immediately and they actually place them in the basket. Whereas if I made them like, if we had a mud room and had them put them in a cubby, <laughs> they probably wouldn't put them in a cubby. Um, there's also another brand. I'm not remembering the name of it, but if you DM me later on Instagram, I will send you a link and it's a really beautiful um, way to put your shoes in your entryway and it looks really nice. Um, okay. So advice, um, for the process of moving into your new apartment, should you buy containers ahead of time before you sort your stuff? I would say no. Um, when I do move-ins and I'm actually going to go view a project on Monday, that's a huge move-in. It's really important a, that, you know, the space you're moving into. So at this time, Caitlin, you probably, am I answering? No, no. Um, anonymous. Um, you probably know the space you're moving into, but really understand the space you're moving into and then really understand the inventory of what you're gonna move with. Moving is such a good opportunity to edit, um, to only bring with you to this new fresh space, what you want, need, use, and love. Um, so understand, and the process of putting things in boxes by categories gives you a really good idea of the volume of each category. So as you're packing and you're only putting in the boxes what you use, need, and love, that gives you a really good sense of how those will need to be stored and the amount of product you'll need. So again, you'll need to know your space, get measurements, and then understand really what you're moving with. Um, and again, try to only bring to the new house what you really, really want. I know that's hard, especially you're busy and working full time to like just throw everything in the box and be like, I'll deal with it later, but it will feel so good to move into your new space with only the things that you're really going to keep there. Okay. Um, uh, I love this, um, organizing it husband's scuba gear. Um, Hannah DM me later. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Bulky linens. That is a question I get a lot because if um, you have a small space and you have a closet and you have a lot of bulky linens. It takes up a lot of space. And so my favorite trick is to get the space backs. Um, that sounds really sexy, doesn't it? Um, but to get the space backs, it shrinks all the items for bulky um, linens that you're not using all the time, especially if you only sometimes have guests and you have linens for guests. 
shrink those up and then get a nice big rectangular bin. And for example, it could go down under here. And that's actually what we did for a while is we had a uh, nice big rectangular bin that we put like three or four shrunken space back, space back bags in um, that really maximized space. Um, and so you tell me if we have time for any other ones, any other questions? I think maybe we can squeeze in one more question. Let me see. Um, okay, so I like the question of any recommendations for how to get rid of the stuff you no longer want. Um, okay, so within the last year, it's been really interesting watching what's going on at donation centers. And um, so three years ago, two years ago, when I would go, I would be the only person there donating stuff often. Um, there'd be no problem. That is not the case now. There are lines, there's time limits, there's box limits, because these donation centers are so overwhelmed with people who are watching all those Netflix shows about organizing. Um, and this is such a great movement of people wanting to love their spaces more and feel more light and free. But it also really does mean that there is, um, these donation centers are really overloaded. And sometimes things aren't being responsibly donated and they're left with like a lot of broken items or you know items that they don't really need or nobody else wants. And so my suggestion is before you go to save yourself time to call around. So where I live, nine out of 10 places within a 10 mile radius, um, don't accept kids items, don't accept stuffed animals. Sometimes they don't even accept clothes. And so you wanna save your time by calling ahead and then understanding their hours, understanding if there is a limit. So say they open at 10, they might only accept from 10 to 11. Um, and then before you go, say you're going to a Goodwill, at Goodwill, they have you sort all the items. And so after some projects, my car will be full of items I'm donating. I always have them pre-sorted because then I'm just, you know, putting the boxes of that category in the container. And that really, really helps <laughs> you save so much time, like hours of your time. So, um, there are so many good questions. I've never seen this many, like <clears throat> really specific, amazing questions. You guys really get it. You guys are really wanting to organize. I love this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, please feel free to DM me. I will put up a question box on my Instagram to follow up with this. And so everybody can see everybody's questions because these are really good. And I think they're going to really help people. So following this, I will put a question box up on my Instagram and you guys can ask any of these questions and then everybody can see the questions. So everybody's getting a lot of help and resources. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for today's workshop. A big, big thank you to Holly for joining awesome. us today. Thanks, we guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you. So remember Thank that you. the workshop is available on Muji's <clears throat> YouTube shortly for replay Thanks, if you want to watch it again. And be sure to find Muji on social at Muji USA, as well as Holly at Breathing Room Organization. All social handles are available in the chat. We hope that you guys have a lovely weekend and hope to see you all again soon. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Guys.